Shalom Vracha from Yushalayim Ira Kodesh. This evening's study, Parashat Shavua, Parashat Shlach. Uh, we're in, we study the tragic story of the spies that went to the land of Canaan, that went to the land of Israel, and unfortunately, 10 out of the 12 came back with such a negative report. And the tragedy that followed is well known. We just uh, begin the study here in, in the 13th chapter of the book of Numbers. And the story of the Meragalim is one of the great, great tragedies of biblical literature. One of the questions that so many students of Torah ask is how is it that the people of the quality of those chosen to go and spy out the land, how is it that they fail in such a miserable way? They came back with such negative reports about Eretz Israel. We see that the Yoshua, Kalev, were able to uh, remain faithful to the great land, to the great promise, to the great vision, to the great promises of God, the great understanding of, of the uh, superiority of the land of Israel. But the people that went, the overwhelming majority, they failed. And, and they came back with such discouraging comments, such discouraging remarks. Just read Parashat Shlach. And, and one, one is astounded. What's, what's particularly problematic is that these were not ordinary uh, men who traveled to Israel. I'm quoting from the third pasuk, the third pasuk in our in our parasha, chapter thirteen, verse three. Moshe Moshe sent this, uh, these messengers. Kulam anashim, These were the gedolim, adam gedolei adar, rashei bnei Yisraelima, the leaders of the Jewish people. This, this was they did take from the from the lower uh, class. Rashi ben Yisrael, Rashi Rashi points out on Rashim, Lashon Chashivut, Kol Anashim Shem Bamikral, Lashon Chashivut, distinguished people. They call them Anashim. Rashi ben Yisrael, the leaders, the outstanding leaders of the community, the outstanding leaders of the tribes. These are the ones who come back and make the Jewish people cry and scream and want to go back to Egypt, and they're they're so they're so. Uh, uh, sure in their position that they don't want to go to Israel? They come back and they, they, they speak against the land by Yimassum Be'eretz Hemdach HaZmashalom. They despise the land, the desired land of God. Now there are many, many, many approaches to this question. Many approaches in, uh, due to the constriction of, of time. I'm only going to discuss one. Believe uh, that there may be at some future point we can discuss other approaches. This is an approach, not, not the approach. What does Bli Nader mean? Okay. Uh, it means uh, I, I'll try my best. I don't want to take it as a formal vow to do so. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a religious concept that if somebody says they're going to do a, a positive uh, action of a mitzvah of sort, then if they don't, if they don't add this Bli Nader, then perhaps it's under a, a, some kind of level of, uh, of, of, of a vow which is extremely uh, serious in terms of, of a commitment. So I'm, I'm trying to make a commitment. But the Belina there, you know, like, yeah, I'll try it. I don't problem. Um, someone once said jokingly, but it's not funny. He said that when some people don't, don't intend to keep what they say, they say Belina there. But, that's, but that's, not, that's not the way it's supposed to be. I mean, Belina there means you, you, you're going to try to do it, but just Belina there without the formality of any kind of, without the formality of any kind of that. So the approach that's followed in Zoharic tradition, in the Zohar, if you're interested, it's, it's in the Zohar on our parasha, page 158 of the third section of the Zohar. The Zohar says that the leaders of the Jewish people, these leaders of the Jewish people, understood that if the Jewish people now enter Israel, they would lose their authority as leaders. They would no longer be the Rashi B'nai Yisrael. And therefore, says the Zohar, I have the language in front of me, you know, Amai natlu tada? Why is it that they follow this, this form of counsel? Ela amiru, 
If the Jewish people enter the land of Israel, we will no longer be Rashi Bnei Yisrael. There'll be other leaders. Maybe there are leaders for the Gola, there are leaders for Chutz Laaretz, and maybe you have a different group of leaders who are leaders in Eretz Yisrael. Our, our mission is to be the leaders of the Jewish people in the desert on the way to Israel. We will not be. Now, this itself needs, this, this itself needs analysis, right? It doesn't mean that there are certain kind of leaders who are appropriate in Chutz Laaretz and certain kind of leaders who are appropriate in Israel. But according to the Zohar, according to the Zohar, now, this doesn't mean that they, that they necessarily uh, consciously intended to to, uh, to to speak negative words of Israel or, or, or consciously intended to discourage the Jewish people. But it could be, I think it's one, read, one way to read this art, that there was some kind of subconscious uh, awareness that if indeed the Jewish people go to Israel, they're, they're out. They're no longer, they're no longer involved in this in, in the leadership. Now, we're talking about great people, right? Uh, it seems that even the greatest of people, one of the greatest temptations in the world, is the temptation of honor. Uh, and when someone, when someone takes over the position that someone is accustomed to having, even great, great people, even great leaders, even the greatest people, even the most humble people, it disturbs them to such an extent that maybe they can get so confused that they can leave the uh, section of the spies. If I may, I'd like to refer uh, Rabbi Miner in one of his writings writes about this. L- look at the 11th chapter of uh, one of the most famous works of Musar, uh, known to us, Misilat Yisharim, by Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato. In chapter 11, in chapter 11 in the path of the upright, he says that more tempting than many of the other greeds of the world there's a certain temptation of a lust for this and lust for that and the lust for more than many others is the the, the, the uh, greed, the temptation the, the urgency that a person feels that they want to be the leader they want, they want to have the honorable position and he says that even, even people that even people who are able to control themselves in so many other areas of pursuit, when it comes to the temptations of losing their honor, they fail. Quoting the Mitzvah Yisharim, "Va'al davar zen nichshelu rabim v'nevadu." Great people, leader, leading people, outstanding people, lost it because of this because of this temptation. And he cites all kinds of examples. I'm not going to go into it. He says that's the downfall of Korach in the book of Amit Bar. That's the downfall of Yeravam ben Nevat in the book of Kings. And then he writes. And that's the downfall of the spies. Who shigaram lefidat chazal el hamiraglim sheyotziu dibal aretz? This is it. This was the motivation because they had some kind of sense that they would lose leadership. V'garmu mitalehem uluchol daram, and they caused death to themselves and to so many people of their generation. They all died out. Miratam pen yimat kvodam bechnisatam. La'aretz, la because they will lose their, their honor. They will lose their status. They will lose their level of dignity when they get there to Israel. Shalom you aim to see him to Israel. Because other people will, will assume positions of leadership. And that, perhaps for us, we're learning about the greatest people in the world, if that's true for them. How much more so for, for each of us. How careful we have to be in pursuing honor and the positions of honor. Uh, I'd just like to uh, read a section of the Talmud in the, the end of Masechet Ben Ahot, if you're interested, it's on 109b. One of the greatest rabbis, one of the greatest leaders of the, the period of the Mishnah, the head, the Nasi of the community, Tanya, Amar Rabbi Yoshua Ben Prachya. Rabbi Yoshua Ben Prachya taught the following teaching in a Baraita. Yoshua Ben Prachya, some of us know him from the Mishnahic literature, you know, Yoshua Ben Prachya. But the Chila, he said, originally, Anybody would tell me, please, could you, could you please lead us? Could you be, please be the leader of, a, of our, of, could you be the Nasi? Could you be the, the head of the community? Call her Omer Lee. Anybody would say to me, Alayla, please, please uh, uh, ascend to the position of leadership. I would be so angry at that suggestion. I would be so dis- distraught. It's what, me? You want me to be the leader? I'd be so angry at that for, 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 uh, for uh, proposing such a position to me. I don't know how to translate that, but 
I, I would tie them up in front of a in front of a, a lion. Literally? I, no, no. I need I need to know the But now and that's indirect. In other words, he doesn't do anything directly to them. But the lion takes care of it. Ata. But now that I have been appointed to position of honor, and now I'm the nasi. Anybody would come over and say, "Could you please step down from your position of leadership?" I would take a boiling hot, pour, boiling hot water and pour it directly on the head. You know, ata. An example, an example given is Saul. Great king Saul, so modest, so running away from all kinds of positions of leadership. But once he became the king, when, when David wanted to somehow take it away, or when it was taken away from him, it disturbed him so much. I don't really understand the story of the spies, but at least one level for each of us. We have to be so careful in our pursuit of honor. And uh, God should help us. The real, the really truly honored person is one who shows honor to others. May we learn true, true levels of, of kavod. Understanding that the true level of kavod is connected only to, to God. And may we rectify the sins of the spies through our own behavior in every possible way. Amen. Thank you so much for listening.